Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the big old vegan color GPU manufacturer NVIDIA which has been somewhat relevant recently after they quote unquote released their first lineup of Blackwell cards. Now there's been a lot of discussions about the prices, the performance, the availability of the cards, the scalping situation, all things that are definitely not poggers. However, that's not what I want to talk about today. Instead, there's something that concerns me a little bit more and it's actually the main reason for why I've held off on buying Nvidia cards in recent years. You know, some people join Team Red because of things like price to performance, the relatively higher VRAM, and I guess to try to beat the evil anti-consumer monopoly, but that's actually not the reason why I choose AMD. In regards to the price, it kind of doesn't really matter which one I pick because even if I go with AMD, I'm still paying a fuck ton of money for these graphics cards so I might as well just pick the one that fits my interest more even if it might not necessarily have the best price to performance. When it comes to VRAM, honestly I'll just buy the one that has the best VRAM regardless if it's AMD or Nvidia because it's not like AMD doesn't have its own fair share of cards that have some pretty fucking abysmal VRAM. And as for the whole Monopoly argument, look, I don't care if Jensen is literally stealing my blood to engage in a satanic ritual as long as he's making good cards. Something that really does matter to me is Linux. And also a little bit of gaming consoles. I'll elaborate a bit more what I mean by that, but let's specifically talk about Linux. Now recently, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out on PC. Prior to this getting released, it was confirmed that this would be deck verified, which is cool, especially because FF16 wasn't deck verified. Not to say that you can't play that game on a Steam Deck, you absolutely can, though I wouldn't recommend it. Now, despite the game being verified, if you actually go to ProtonDB, you will see reviews like this. And this. Reports of the game having missing textures. Footage like this. How can this game be deck verified when it has shit like this? Well, it's because this issue of missing textures is only happening on Nvidia cards. If you have an AMD card, especially now after a recent update that fixed some stutters, you'll be fine. You know, I've been primarily gaming on Linux for a while now and I'm not joking when I say that this is probably the first time I've seen issues like this happening with a game that just came out in a very long time. Like, I've dealt with some minor graphical bugs with Unity games every now and then, but this level of broken graphics is not something that I thought I would be seeing again, especially for a game that is meant to be deck verified. And this ended up highlighting something that I felt for a while, Nvidia, despite the fact that in recent years, they have actually legitimately made a lot of improvements in the Linux side of things. Wayland seems to work a lot better with recent G4 cards, They've open sourced their kernel modules, they've been sending contributors to the open source NVK driver. Things are looking good. I, I really want to emphasize this part because I don't want to give the impression that I don't think they haven't been doing anything to improve the Linux experience because they absolutely have. So keep that in mind when I say that Nvidia is severely behind AMD when it comes to driver support and it's a gap that I don't think is going to get shrinked anytime soon for three main reasons. The first is that AMD was the first to open source their drivers, and I mean that not even necessarily implying that Nvidia has done the same recently. You know, people often read news like this and assume that Nvidia has suddenly gone open source with their drivers, but in reality, all Nvidia has actually done is open source their kernel modules and it just so happens that their graphics drivers now come shipped with those open source modules instead of the proprietary ones baked into the software. A kernel module is just simply code that is loaded in the kernel and helps enable the functionality of the video driver. It doesn't mean that the actual video driver is open source and I honestly don't think Nvidia will ever fully open source that stuff because they make money off of locking the features and having a monopoly on their AI capabilities. You seriously think that Nvidia will ever allow people to have the right to see, copy and reproduce their software? Hell no. People also like to highlight the fact that Nvidia is now contributing to NVK and while that's amazing, trust me, I love the fact that they're doing that. Again, let's do a little bit of research. First of all, that's only the Vulkan driver, it's not the main graphics driver that gives a signal to the display. But most importantly, NVK is a reverse engineer community built driver. This is not an official driver from Nvidia. Nvidia hasn't open sourced their Vulkan drivers and again, they probably never will. Meanwhile, AMD has open sourced their graphics driver. 
they have open sourced the Vulcan driver as well. So much so that the community made their own Vulcan driver, aka Ride V, that's actually better than the official open source Vulcan driver. That is what it means to be open source, because you see, when you make your source code available to the public without any abusive licensing restrictions, it allows people to compile the code, debug it, make a version that's better than the original, and most importantly, you're not beholden to AMD. Because while GeForce users are now sitting and waiting until Nvidia ships a driver that hopefully fixes the issue on the Radeon side of things, instead of waiting for AMD to fix whatever issue there may be with AMD VLK, which trust me, there are quite a few, instead, we the community can vet the code and submit commits to Red V if we find any fixes or tweaks. You know, this actually reminds me of an issue that was reported several years ago regarding some performance issues with Cyberpunk and Horizon Zero Dawn with older Nvidia cards, and Deutogen, the man behind the XVK, just straight up said that yeah, we're out of options unless Nvidia intervenes. Now of course, that isn't to say that once Nvidia open sourced their drivers, suddenly every issue with their cards on Linux will magically be fixed overnight, but you'd be surprised by how much magic the open source community can do. Like at the end of the day, there's nothing unique about AMD that makes it easier to work on Linux. In fact, to get where we are right now, we've had to deal with a lot of bullshit, with Radeon cards being the buggy mess that they were. But the fact that so much of their software stack is open source helps a lot, and as someone that likes experimenting with bleeding edge software on Linux, there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't work out of the box on Nvidia. Wayland has a lot of issues, HDR initially didn't work on Nvidia cards, DLSS 3 frame generation took 2 years to be officially supported on Linux, meanwhile FSR 3 only took a couple of updates to finally work within the first month. These are just some of the many compromises that you have to make when you choose to use GeForce on your main Linux system, and I honestly wish that people would highlight these problems because oftentimes people switching to Linux will run into a lot of issues and they might not even realize that probably half of them is because of the video card that they're using, and you can't blame them, Nvidia has the biggest market share in GPUs. You can't expect the average person to be aware that on Linux it's actually the opposite of Windows. While people often say that AMD has terrible drivers on Windows while Nvidia has the most stable ones, on Linux it's the other way around, like literally. Now of course I'm not saying there aren't advantages to using an Nvidia card on Linux. For example, NVENC tends to produce a better image quality than AMF, and that's assuming they're even able to get AMF to work because it doesn't work with the open source drivers, you have to install the proprietary drivers of AMD, and even then you have to use a specific build of OBS and you also have to launch the program using very specific commands, it's a complete fucking mess. I'm okay with using VAPI, but I do think that NVENC has a better image quality. DaVinci Resolve tends to work a lot better with Nvidia cards compared to AMD, in fact, Productivity oriented programs in general, even if they do work on AMD cards, they often require the pro drivers in order to get the best performance. And of course, if you're on the AI scene, like you're obviously going to get a better experience with Nvidia cards, so there are some advantages to using GeForce cards. But if you're someone who's just targeting a regular desktop experience, you are more than likely going to get a much more stable and consistent experience with AMD cards compared to Nvidia. Now the proprietary nature of Nvidia drivers is only one of the reasons. The other reason, and this one admittedly I don't think is entirely Nvidia's fault, is the Steam Deck. To get back to the initial story of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the reason why the game got deck verified despite having rendering issues on GeForce is entirely because the Steam Deck uses AMD graphics. So realistically, if a developer wanted to make sure their game received the deck verification, they only needed to make sure their title doesn't have any game breaking bugs on RDNA cards when running underneath Linux. Now, several months ago, I made a video that was in response to a video made by a YouTuber called AirMax in which he commented on DirectX 12 games and ray tracing having performance issues on Linux. Now, I would like to first clarify that Linux doesn't actually have issues with DirectX 12 games relative to older APIs. When it comes to ray tracing on the other hand, it's a bit more complicated, I recommend watching my video for more details, but in essence, Linux, at least when it comes to AMD cards, the performance regressions with ray tracing are mostly related to the drivers, and when it comes to pure raster, they're nearly identical performance wise to Windows. However, with Nvidia cards, they're 
does seem to be some observable regressions with VKD3D. Now, I can't personally verify if these performance dips are consistent across a wide pool of games because I don't have an Nvidia card to test this. And when I benchmark Black Myth Wukong with ray tracing on both my AMD cards, I didn't get the 50% loss that he was getting. At most, I was getting around 10%. So I can't vouch for this if I can't 100% verify this myself with my own testing, but he did point out that Valve in general doesn't feel very encouraged to advance development with Proton on Nvidia cards due to the fact that their hardware is based on AMD graphics. And at least up until this point that was true, but at the same time I'm not sure if we can really blame Valve for this. At the end of the day, Valve is just a corporation that's out here to make money. If they don't have any financial incentive to improve compatibility with Nvidia cards, they realistically have no reason to invest development on it. Now of course, I'm sure Valve has been working on improving compatibility with Nvidia hardware with SteamOS. In fact, I think they even confirmed this in an interview, which reminds me of the third reason for why Nvidia may continue to be at a disadvantage, although this one is a bit more speculative. Now recently, Valve announced that they would not only be making SteamOS public, but they would actually be working with third-party handheld vendors to ship SteamOS on their devices. Now, so far, the only manufacturer that has been announced to be collaborating with Valve is Lenovo. We don't know if the likes of Asus or INE are planning the same thing, but we do know that at some point later this year, Valve will release a beta for SteamOS, primarily optimized for handhelds, that will be available as an ISO file that people can download. Now, how does this relate to Nvidia in specific? Well, if we look at the landscape of gaming handhelds, more specifically the Windows handhelds, the vast majority of them are based on AMD graphics. There are a few Android based handhelds that use ARM chips and I believe MSI made an Intel Power Portable device. However, the drivers for Intel graphics, while they have been improving, aren't as mature as AMD's and rarely will you find handhelds that have Nvidia chips inside of it. Putting dedicated GPUs into these small factor devices I can imagine would be a nightmare to create a good cooling solution while also having a respectable battery life. So unless Nvidia starts producing their own processors, which seems like they intend on doing that, the problem though is if they were to do that, they would most likely be producing ARM based processors. Now most games out there are designed for x86 processors, so if you want to run them on an ARM CPU, you would typically need to run them underneath an emulator. Now x86 emulation on ARM is not actually bad, it's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. But at the same time, you have to take this into perspective. Assuming that more OEMs decide to ship SteamOS into their handhelds, which we're not sure if that's actually going to happen, but let's just assume that that becomes the future, at least with some variants of their devices. If they were to do that, they would now have to run two layers of compatibility. One would be to get Windows games to run on Linux, and the other one would be to run x86 games on ARM. Now just to be clear, I'm not saying there won't be any ARM based handhelds based on Nvidia hardware. I'm sure Nvidia will do what they can to push their chips to OEMs, even if it means sponsoring one of them. But I get the feeling that many of them are just going to choose to go with AMD. They're well established when it comes to producing x86 mobile chips with powerful enough integrated graphics to run games, especially now with the release of Strix. And there's already a lot of work done to improve compatibility with Windows games on Linux with AMD graphics thanks to the community as well as Valve due to the Steam Deck. And my main concern with Nvidia is not so much that this is going to hold back progress. In fact, I actually think this might push Nvidia to want to improve even further if there's high demand for shipping SteamOS on commercial gaming hardware. But what does worry me is that there might be an incentive for other manufacturers to improve the development of Proton as now they would have a financial reason to do so if they're now using SteamOS and they want to improve the hardware support as well as offer some optimization tweaks. But if that were to happen, I worry that they might be more inclined to improve the gaming experience on AMD more so than Nvidia and even Intel, especially when they can just hire developers to contribute commits to Mesa to improve the Red V drivers. Meanwhile, on the Nvidia side of things, 
They first have to go through the journey of establishing compatibility with ARM processors in order for their mobile chips to be attracted to OEMs that want to make gaming handhelds. And here's the thing, I think their ARM chips are probably going to end up working pretty well on Windows laptops, but as far as SteamOS gaming handhelds, they do have some challenges. And look, we're talking about a trillion dollar company, if there's anyone in the game that can bring in some massive innovations, it's definitely them, but it's not going to be easy. But then again, we are talking about Linux at the end of the day. The adoption of Linux computers is probably not enough for them to be worried about AMD taking market share amongst Linux users. However, I will say that Nvidia probably cares more about this than you might think. In recent years, Nvidia has primarily grown their business in the field of AI. And a lot of the training models, machine learning models either exclusively work on Linux or can run on Windows through WSL, which is basically just Linux. Now, AMD is nowhere near as mature and established in the AI business as Nvidia, not even close. But they have been making some efforts. They've been acquiring some AI companies. They introduced AI accelerators with RDNA 3, and it seems like it's gonna get better with RDNA 4. Not to say that AMD will take market share in the AI field, in fact, I think this bubble will probably burst before they even start to make a dent, but at the same time, if the overall desktop experience on Linux, which bear in mind is the most reliable platform for machine learning software, if the overall desktop experience is better on AMD, all while they're investing more and more into the AI business, I would imagine that Nvidia might be at least a little bit wary which I think is the one saving grace we have so far as far as having hope that Nvidia might work a bit more in improving the desktop experience on Linux. Is this something that Nvidia should be massively worried about? To be honest, I don't think so. They'll probably be fine if we're being completely honest. They have a well established business with their data center GPUs and even though I've been commenting a lot about the handheld market, it's also worth considering that Many of them might still just continue to ship Windows primarily, especially if Microsoft decides to create an Xbox interface if they ever choose to release their own portable devices. So maybe in the end, there isn't a ton that's actually at stake here. However, as a Linux user, I worry about the state of GeForce and their drivers and I frankly want them to be better. Now personally speaking, unless Nvidia decides to open source their drivers, it's going to be hard for me to transition to Team Green because I'm just not interested in having unnecessary proprietary blobs on my computer. Another reason for why I use AMD graphics is also because it allows me to stay in touch with a lot of the tech that eventually goes to video game consoles. As someone that owns a PS5 and a Steam Deck, having an AMD CPU and GPU allows me to reproduce and reference a lot of things which could either make it in video form or just for my own personal interest. But regardless of that, I wouldn't mind owning a separate GeForce card just so I'm able to test out some of their cutting edge stuff and I do hope that they continue to improve the Linux experience as they've been doing in recent months. But until then, I frankly just can't really justify buying an Nvidia card. But anyway, I think that's all I have to share. Thanks for watching this video, hope you're doing well.